You haven't found your way here by accident. It's a unique and meaningful connection meant to deliver the impactful message of Apostle Joshua Selman to your doorstep. This message carries the potential to not only bless you, but also inspire you for greatness. Open your heart wide and allow your mind to embrace the richness of this transformative message. Before we delve further, I extend a warm invitation for you to actively engage with this significant message. Join in by liking the video. First reason why believers are incapacitated and limited economically in spite of God's economic program for the excelling of the saints is that they are ignorant of God's financial system or they have incomplete knowledge. So the first reason is ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Very quickly, let me give you number two. The second reason why many believers are in poverty, they are in lack and want, is the absence of value that is needed and useful. Please write that down. That's a very, very important point to note. The absence of value that is needed and useful. We live in a world where your value is what gives you a space. If you do not have value that is needed and useful, you will most likely remain in lack and want. Are you ready for number three? The third reason I gave you, and I'm repeating it now for your hearing and learning, is lack of productivity and excellence. This is the third reason why many believers are kept perpetually in poverty, lack and want. Lack of productivity. What is productivity? Converting your value to products and services, serving them with excellence to a targeted consumer base. This is what we call productivity. Just because you have discovered your value does not make it rewardable. It is at the point of that conversion that your value becomes rewardable. Are we together? I'm running through the list. So number one, I said ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Number two, the absence of value that is needed and useful. Number three, lack of productivity and excellence. Can I give you number four? And I'm going to dwell a bit on that tonight as we delve into this very serious prophetic subject. The absence of strategic relationships. The absence of strategic relationships. The fourth reason why believers are kept in lack and want in poverty and penury is that they lack strategic relationships. I remember when we discussed this subject, we considered John chapter 5 and verse 7. The man at Bethesda said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. That was his problem. He knew where the solution was, but the man to help and assist him was not there. Number five. The fifth reason why believers end up in lack, want, poverty, is the bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment or the absence or the lack of spiritual empowerment there is an empowerment component to wealth and abundance in all its ramifications and perhaps i should go ahead of myself to tell you that when we talk about abundance we are not limiting it to finance alone i hope you know that by now that when we talk about abundance, abundance deals with supplies and sufficiency, not just finances alone. In the kingdom, when we discuss the subject of abundance, we're not limiting it to just finance. Finance is an important component, but there are many people who have finance, but they do not have abundance. Abundance captures finance, but it also captures all everything that makes for your sufficiency bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment is the fifth reason why believers end up poor they do not know that when it has to do with the business of accessing finance as a christian in a bedeviled world in an antichrist system you will need an empowerment from heaven are we together now there is such a thing as the power to get wealth there is such a thing as the power to prosper number six we identify the sixth reason why believers, all men really, but believers remain in lack, in want, and poverty as impatience. The sixth reason is impatience. Impatience. 
the bible says he that is hasty to be wealthy will not be innocent god is a god of speed god brings acceleration in fact that is the thrust of our discussion tonight god can bring men into accelerated blessings but god does not rush people arbitrarily the passion to want to make it instantaneously is what robs men of following due spiritual process and the bible says if you follow such a path you will not be innocent can i give you the seventh and final reason laziness laziness what is laziness the laxity to think the laxity to take action that inertia that refusal to engage your mind to engage your energy productively is called laziness you would be surprised how many believers are lazy all wise they are lazy spiritually they are lazy in terms of engaging their minds they are lazy in terms of submitting themselves to the discipline of learning the discipline of putting knowledge to action and so many of them become poor allow me to do a final rundown on the list number one ignorance of god's financial system number two the absence of value that is needed and useful number three lack of productivity and excellence number four the absence of strategic relationships number five the bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment six impatience final reason seven laziness may you be delivered from all this amen. shout a believers amen. amen may you be delivered from all this amen. now please let me have your attention i have taught you in this house that even though we are in the world the bible says we are not of the world do you know what that means there is a system that governs the earth as we know there is a system that governs the thinking of the earth the policies that have framed the economic system of nations uh, is largely antichrist are we together now now some of those policies are great and profitable but that you are in a system that did not factor honor to god in designing that system so you would find out that for everyone who comes um who declares the lordship of christ over their lives you are you are working within a system that is already against you by default listen very carefully the world system is founded on number one hatred disdain for god and his ways you have to get used to this the world system it was not designed to honor god it does not factor the supremacy of the god of heaven and so when you find yourself as a believer within the cosmos within this system you will find out that your loyalty to god will make you to conflict with many things that are the norms of the system for instance the world system is a system that was founded on selfishness say after me selfishness selfishness and self-centeredness is not an unusual thing in the world system it's only unusual to you as a believer that means you are immersed in a system where you would usually not find anyone participate in your destiny until they see how it can profit them are we together you will hardly find people who are kind to you indefinitely there usually will be something they are looking onto that is the world that we're dwelling the world system is a system that is immersed in wickedness even your bible says the whole world lies in wickedness what does that mean your compassion is not factored no it doesn't matter whether you are destroyed in the process men have an obsession to become men have an obsession to advance men have an obsession to prosper it does not matter who is wounded who is hurt who is destroyed or who even dies in the process this is the desperation that we find in our world so when you are angry that someone cheated to get to where he is or someone was corrupt that unfortunately that is the system but now when the believer comes into christ part of your loyalty to the kingdom is that you must pledge that you are not going to subscribe to that system there is an implication to that pledge 
when you come into Christ and now say I will walk I will live a life that is corrupt free no bribery no corruption are we together for instance you are occupying an office and you have access to just manipulate one figure and one billion naira is yours quietly but because you have pledged your allegiance to the God of the Bible the first thing that will suffer is you and your children and everything around you until you now learn the kingdom system now the danger the trouble with church is that on one hand we tell people to walk in holiness and righteousness void of all of these antichrist practices but we do not show them the nobler and more superior kingdom system so on one hand, they avoid all of those things and they clearly become and remain victims. They become cheated. Are we together now? It ought not to be so. There is a nobler kingdom system. Listen, let me tell you. If you understand God's kingdom system, you will never admire Satan's system of prospering men because it's by far insultive is by far degrading there is a nobler more superior kingdom system but until you know it you will remain a victim of regrets from not partnering with satan are we together i've seen people who have become and remain victims it has affected their marriages, affected their children, affected the education of their children. They had an opportunity to compromise, but on account of their stance for God, they refused. But now, you think about this. If you are making that much sacrifice for God and he calls himself love, it means that there is a system he has designed already for you. Am I right on that? In our nation here we have, and I thank God for that, the police force and the paramilitary, there is a growing, there is a growing, growing passion for integrity. And right now we keep seeing in the news where perhaps people will try to bribe a police officer and he will refuse. You see, they, and, and, and for many of them who refuse, you see that eventually their superiors reward them, no matter how small. That reward system now started showing that integrity has value. God will never tell you to abstain from, to avoid, you know, anything that corrupts your integrity and not give you a superior alternative that brings you to a decent life with dignity. That is not the God of the Bible. Are we together now? That your wife should never look at you and say so we are in this state now simply because you said no to the antichrist system it should never be so but because most believers do not know god's way of doing things he does not know we, we don't know god's way of bringing us into the abundance bringing us into prophecy many believers keep crediting their weakness even financially economically they make it look like it's god that is god should be blamed he's the reason why i am where i am i'm telling you god sent me to tell you it's not true god has no hand in the calamity and financial catastrophe of many people he's already made a way it's up to you to understand that way and engage it by faith i hope you know the day an individual gets healed that's not the day jesus died for the person's healing that was the day he discovered that truth or had access to the anointing that will bring him into that experience. That is the same thing too, economically. The day you prosper is not the day God prospered you. It is the day you found the truth. You engage the truth. Ye shall know the truth. Have you forgotten that scripture? It says the truth shall make you free. If you live a defeated life financially, you will still go to heaven. And then you will discover that God has spoken great things concerning you, his Zion. But you did not maximize your life spiritually. I'm told of a story, I think it's just some fiction to illustrate. How that a gentleman one time was taking a voyage from one nation to another. And when he got there, they noticed that he was not coming for lunch and dinner within the ship. He locked himself and he was just praying. He had starved for days without food because unknown to him that the train ticket covered his meals and he did not know that 
and he would lock up himself starving with a lot of pain getting lean getting sick and one time i think one of the you know attendants came to knock his door and he opened and he said we notice your seat has been empty and the person said well um, i'm not sure i have any seat here are you not a, a bona fide passenger here yes did you pay yes there's a provision for you to enjoy your meals and the person said well i don't know mine is just to arrive safely now whether or not that person knew did not stop his seat from being vacant my goodness how many believers do not know that god is a god of portions that god is kind enough the bible tells us watch this it says if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children just because you are not aware does not mean the provision is not there can god ask you to start a vision and not create the system of empowerment what sort of a god is that can god empower you to start a family grant you access to children and not empower you to be able to take care of them with dignity that is not the god we serve we must not allow our ignorance misrepresent god are we together yes it says worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us honor and glory and power and riches and blessing that's what he died to receive for us worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us he received all this for us power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings this is what he received for us now whether you walk in the experience of these things or not is another subject but it's important for you to know that you have stepped into a season where God wants to see you step into abundance so that you are able to serve the purposes of the of the Lord if you believe that shout amen, amen. now I want to show you something very powerful in this kingdom please let me have your attention in this kingdom there is a difference between wealth abundance and kingdom wealth there is a difference a difference between wealth abundance and kingdom wealth they are not the same and I'm going to tell you what the difference is for many people when they approach the subject of abundance and the subject of wealth or the subject of well-being generally they think that the way the world approaches this subject is the way the saints should approach the subject that is an error already the believer is governed by a set of beliefs there is an understanding that if you do not have you are not a true believer are we together there is a difference between wealth abundance and kingdom wealth and abundance that word kingdom makes all the difference i have taught you here and it bears repeating that you must understand the purpose of the blessings of the lord in the kingdom you are already at a risk if you try to journey on the path to wealth and abundance without knowing why the first thing you receive as a believer is an orientation as to why god prepared an economic system for you the difference between carnality and a mundane pursuit that ends you up in the flesh or that which empowers you to be an effective witness is disorientation i have taught you that there are three essential reasons why god blesses the saints why he opens us up to abundance sufficiency and wealth can i repeat it for your learning number one to live a comfortable life write that down and never forget it god is not against your living comfortably know this god wants you and i to live a comfortable life whilst we serve him it is the reason why sacrifice means a lot to him because you were not designed to live that way god wants you to live a comfortable life number two the second assignment behind your accessing the supplies of heaven in all its ramifications whether finances or otherwise the second reason is so that you can advance the cause of the kingdom 
my God, please write that. Sky it if you are writing and don't forget that. A bigger reason, a bigger motivation as to why you must manifest the blessings, why you must access finances, resources and abundance in the kingdom is so that you can make resources available for this kingdom come project. I will repeat it again for your hearing that the name of the Lord Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Anybody who is incapacitated will not be able to do much for the kingdom in this end time. I tell you this from the integrity of scripture. If you are incapacitated financially, you will not be able to do much. Not for the kingdom, not for yourself, not for your family. Poverty and lack and want robs men of dignity. It reduces men to look like lower animals. Hallelujah. Advancement of the kingdom is the second reason why we are blessed in this kingdom. The third and final reason why God grants us access to resources and why he's bringing us into this prophetic season of abundance is to be able to be a blessing to the world in a practical and a definite way. Write that down, please. God wants you to be a blessing to all and sundry. According to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God wants you to be a blessing to people beyond the walls of religion, beyond the walls of Christianity, that society is able to experience the impact of the love of Jesus through your life and that principally through your giving. Show me a believer who loves Jesus, who loves society and has the means, the economic means. I show you one who will be a blessing to all, not just to Christians, not just to believers. There are many of you who already have compassionate hearts, but your limitations as far as communicating love and benevolence is lack of resources. And Satan wants it so because he knows you will never be able to help anyone with an empty hand. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The motivation behind your desire for wealth and abundance must be purified by this revelation. Must be purified by this revelation. There are many believers who like money. They love it to a point of obsession. They are carnally minded, driven by money. Usually they like preachers talking about subjects like this. Not necessarily because they love God. Not necessarily because they love his program. They just love the idea of being rich. They love the idea of being of means. They love the idea of being better than someone. That is not the kingdom's approach to the subject of abundance. God's goal is not for you to have more money than brother A or sister B and then flaunt it, marketing the flesh. No, that's not God's goal. God's goal is not just for you to celebrate that you have become, you have arrived, or as we call it in our vernacular here, you are blown. All that subject is complete nonsense from a kingdom standpoint. There is a greater and nobler approach. And this is what I'm teaching you. I tell you that there are many believers who will never access the supplies of heaven. The reason is not that they are not hardworking. The reason is not that they are not productive. There is a corruption in their heart. You have been weighed by God and you have been found to be better off without those resources. God has seen that if these resources step into your hand, you will be a danger to yourself. You will be a danger to your family, a danger to the body of Christ. It's like giving a small child a grenade and that child can detonate it plain and blow up himself, blow up everyone there. So God educates you and in order of priority, before he shows you his ways, he has to culture your understanding. The reason why I grant you access to financial resources, influence, any kind of supply is number one for your comfort. Number two, so that you will provide resources for kingdom advance. Number three, so that you can extend and reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way. Hour of prayer. Somebody said the hour of prayer. 
One more time. Say the hour of prayer. The hour of prayer is the hour of faith. The hour of prayer is the hour of miracles. It matters that you understand the story from the beginning. The Bible tells us that that entire story was predicated upon the subject of prayer. It was on their way to pray as their custom was that a miracle happened. Are we together? The hour of prayer. Immediately we learn that many things happen when we give ourselves to prayer. Prayer was the premise. Prayer was the basis for that story to even start. For that story to even happen. The Bible says they went to pray at the hour of prayer. Meaning if they had no business with prayer, such a story including this miracle will not even be captured in scripture. The basis for the story is that they were committed to the ministry of prayer. Are we learning now? Prayer has several advantages. You will collide with many destiny advancing possibilities in the place of prayer. The Bible says Peter and John, they went to pray. They went to pray at the temple at the hour of prayer. Discipline, sacrifice, consistency, the hour of prayer. Learn these believers. I have taught you endlessly about prayer. A lot of stories, a lot of miracles will be alienated from your life and your Christian experience if you are not passionate about prayer. Are we together? In fact, the Bible puts it this way, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing. KJV says, careful, the word there is anxious, anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. I like the way the Bible puts it. It now prohibits you from doing something wrong. Then it tells you what to do instead. Be anxious or careful for nothing. Then it says, but in everything, 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 every subject of your life can be prayed about. In everything, by prayer and supplication, it says, with thanksgiving, let your request, KJV says, be made known unto God. Let your request be made known unto God. Prayer. It was at the hour of prayer. There are many things that happen to people in scripture at the hour of prayer. That includes Jesus. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 29, the Bible says, As he prayed, Jesus, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. There are certain stories you will never believe about God and will never be captured in your Christian experience until you are a man of prayer. For instance, genuine spiritual encounters. They will be foreign to you if you are not given to prayer. You will think people are lying. Sometimes you will think people are exaggerating experiences. There are dimensions you have to attain unto in prayer to experience certain realities. Someone say, I will pray. Let the devil hear you. Say, I will pray. The hour of prayer. The hour of prayer. Everybody who was not given to prayer never had an opportunity to be a witness of that testimony. The testimony was not for men who wanted to see it. The testimony was for men who were given to the ministry of prayer, not by confession, but by profession. They took the step to the temple. It was on their way to the temple. They had met the man there. That was not their first time seeing him. He had been there. He knew people would come to pray. He knew that the kind prayer does something to your heart. Isn't it amazing that the man wanted arms? And of all the places he could go to beg for help, he stayed close to the people of prayer. Something happens to your heart. That heart of stone is broken. You receive an impartation of genuine compassion. When you are given to the ministry of prayer, is someone learning? I have taught you that an attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. Prayer is not for men of God. No, prayer is not just for, um, you know, prayer warriors or those given into the prophetic or the apostolic ministry. Luke 18, 1. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray 
Once you are a man with flesh and blood, the Bible mandates that you pray. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Be consistent in your prayer adventure. Be consistent in your prayer adventure. Be consistent in your prayer adventure. Don't pray today and then allow calamity to have to force you or fear or Satan or some kind of tragic situation. You must culture yourself. Listen, there is a discipline to prayer. There is the spirit of prayer and supplication, but that spirit is enhanced. That dimension of the Holy Spirit is enhanced through a committal, a committal to remaining prayerful. There is a responsibility component to prayer. The apostles had their hour of prayer. Do you have your hour of prayer? A time dedicated to spend with God. A time dedicated where no activity becomes a distraction. I have taught you, it is your responsibility under God to walk with the spirit of wisdom. To carve out a schedule for an effective, excelling prayer life. A non-religious approach to prayer. You are not just praying to gain acceptance from people that you are prayerful. You are not just praying to deceive yourself. I service like the Pharisees and the scribes did. That prayer has become for you a revelation. That many things happen in the place of prayer. So the first thing we learn from this scripture. The first thing we observe is that God in teaching us the value of prayer decided to move the Holy Spirit to trap this story at an hour whose significance we should not ignore. The Bible says the hour of prayer. Are you ready for the second observation? Number two, we learn from this story what I call the degrading power of afflictions and calamities. The degrading power of afflictions and calamities the Bible simply calls him give us that scripture again verse 2 calls him a certain man please look up how many of you know that when you give birth to children in order of priority after all of the hospital formalities you look forward to naming them there's something called in many cultures and many circles a naming ceremony that people even create a ceremony around names and from that day you don't just call the individual child you call the individual a name even if you want to add baby you can say baby grace baby mercy this man had a name but something happens to men there is a degrading effect that calamities and tragedies bring to men such that your problem becomes greater than your name to a point that they do not even know what you are called this man was not the only man in scripture who had such a degrading effect many people in scripture who received miracles for instance there was a woman too in the bible called the woman with the issue of blood A woman with the issue of blood the Bible talks about another man on blind Jesus himself had a name even though as the word incarnate when he became man the name was given to him the degrading power of afflictions and calamities let me tell you the truth afflictions and calamities have a way of so degrading you you degenerate in honor to a point that people forget your name and forget what you stand for they forget what you represent this has been the plague of many people that family where people die early this one that one they 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 coin you out of a situation of pain that was the, the situation of this man surely he had a name surely he had a family how come the family so left him alone and this man at least from the story we know he was not a baby a name but i have good news for someone isaiah 62 and verse 2 i like that scripture the bible says media give it to us and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory help me and thou shalt be called by a new name a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name 
for someone in the name of Jesus that statement Ichabod that statement that has connected you to pain to calamity to tragedy may my God give you a new name may my God give you a new name in the name of Jesus Christ God can give people new names God can give people new names a name simply means a means of identification God can rewrite a man's story such that even though you were Rahab or was Rahab you would never be traced to whatever it is that happened in Jericho God can give a Ruth a new name do you know that at the end of Ruth's life if not that the Bible told you you would never know that she was once married lost her husband and lost her children God is able to give men a new name for someone you have come into the end of the old I don't care what has happened from January till now in the name that is above all names I'm praying for you may my God begin to do strange things in your life may my God begin to work miracles in your life may the King of Kings arise on your behalf and give you a new name I believe this a man can be called by a name that only the mouth of the Lord will call there are certain miracles that when it happens it becomes an object of awe and marvel and people will carve that testimony around your life this is the woman God gave for man God restored 10 of his family this is the family where 10 people got a job in one week a new name you believe that when a season where God is renaming people did God not rename people in the Bible did you not read that Abraham became Abraham the father of nations did you not read that Sarai became Sarah did you not read that Jacob became Israel is that still in your Bible did you not read that Cephas became Peter Saul became Paul God is still renaming people may he rename you May he give you a name that your children will be called, your grandchildren will be called, a name connected to honor, a name connected to speed, a name connected to restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Number two. Calamities and, inf and afflictions of any kind can degrade men, can bedevil men, can plague men to a point where the dignity that is connected to being God's creation so erodes from your life and people simply name you by your calamities. Can we go to number three? Number three. Still verse two. Please give it to us media. I hope someone is learning. Now watch this. The Bible says, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb lame from his mother's womb pay attention now lame from his mother's womb thank God for this extra information if the Bible just said the man was lame we would probably blame it on his sin or on righteousness but the Bible here says lame from his mother's womb there are times that people are plagued with conditions and challenges that was not their making. The Bible says to us clearly from this scripture that it was not a product of this man's carelessness. It was not a product of this man's making. Lame from his mother's womb. His mother's womb was simply a description to mean we do not understand the origin of this. So the only origin that we can trace to was that from the time he was born he was born that way now there were people who were not born the way they later became an example was the man Mephibosheth Mephibosheth was a healthy child something happened eventually and the midwife dropped him and he was crippled for all his life but in this instance the Bible tells us that this man was lame like every other baby he looked forward to a time you see let me tell you this i'm not a doctor and my apologies if i don't get that right but most times you do not really see some of the troubles in children from the time of birth is that true you would need to allow some time 
to see those deficiencies with all due respect their parents trusting god for miracles for children plagued with say autism or some kind of sickness say every baby under normal circumstance will look like a healthy baby you would have rejoiced when this man was born but at a point in his life where other children should be walking the parents discovered that something was wrong he was still sitting perhaps they consulted physicians and the physician said well let's give him some time never knowing that this man until he became an adult would remain lame the bible says lame from his mother's womb john chapter 9 please from verse 1 to 3 there was another incident like this and jesus gave us perspective to dealing with these kinds of issues verse 1 john chapter 9 is someone learning in the house of god and as jesus passed by he saw a man you see this this trouble of not having good names again which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin that this man or this man or his parents that he was born blind jesus in one word said neither that means there are times that the calamities and the troubles that befall men is as a result of sin is as a result of disobedience is as a result of ignorance and carelessness but in this instance he's saying neither it's not because of the man it's not because of his parents so it is possible to be bedeviled by calamities situations that were not of your making this is a very powerful information Back to Acts chapter 3, please. His mother's womb does not mean caused by his mother so that you don't blame the innocent woman. The woman simply got pregnant and was happy like every other pregnant mother and when it was time to give birth, she gave birth to a child. It is safe to assume that she gave her best as a mother to nurture that baby, hoping with great expectation. But something happened on the way. Can I tell you? It is very important that you refrain from judging carelessly. There are times that people go through things in their life that is not a product of spiritual laxity. It may not even be a product of, of prayerlessness or carelessness. The Bible tells us that there is a possibility of being plagued from your mother's womb. A reality that started from a dimension beyond the scope of science, beyond the scope of common sense. Are we learning now? not all challenges in the lives of men are caused by sin and disobedience there are challenges that people face in life that hopefully until we scale beyond the shores of this level of knowledge we may never understand and it may not make sense to us and the bible says to judge righteous judgments is someone receiving that now let me say this still on the third observation i wrote something here the origin of an affliction or condition is not as important as the determination to be free from it the origin of an affliction the origin of a condition is not as important as your determination to be free from it this is something you must learn debating over the cause of this man's problem debating over the true origin was not so necessary else the bible would have dwelt there isn't it amazing that at the end of the story the most important thing is that the man jumped up was walking was leaping and was praising god the origin of an affliction the origin of a condition might be important to diagnose it but it's not as important as the determination to be free from it it is amazing how people dwell for years they will not pray they will not fast they will not learn the word of god all they are concerned about is i must know the root of this problem and that is not necessarily wrong but knowing the root of a problem does not guarantee deliverance nor does it guarantee salvation even if the bible did not tell us the origin of our problem the bible concludes that all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god thankfully we have perspective we know that by one man adam 
together with Eve, all men were grafted into this nature of sin. But whether we were told that or not, knowing that Adam was the originator of our sin nature did not bring us salvation. Believing in Adam does not give you salvation. Getting angry with Adam does not take sin out of your life. Are we together? You can insult Adam all you can. Join with Eve and insult two of them. You will still go to hell if you are not saved. Anger with Adam does not impart salvation. Hating God for putting man in, at the tree of the Garden of Eden does not bring salvation. Please learn this. There are many of you by this word, God is telling you it's time to go forward. Looking back and discussing uh, this house rent problem, this whatever problem, the most important thing is the issue is there now. So what do we do about the problem now? If I stayed in a good house with a good malaria but you are sick now what do you do pray or go to the hospital or do both don't sit down wasting your time isn't it amazing how many people can spend years discussing problems you will meet someone who will tell you i hate the government of this this years 15 years ago i lost my job till today i don't have another one okay agreed justifiably so you were victimized 15 years is a long time at the time you started complaining, someone was born who took responsibility with their lives and the person right now is enjoying grace and greatness. Refuse to complain. Stop blaming people's situations and conditions and be determined. Be determined. Even if you do not know what to do, hate that condition enough. I am certain that the sermons you've embraced have been a wellspring of blessings lifting your life and igniting a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a heartfelt invitation for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, ensuring you remain connected and never miss any upcoming videos by activating the notification bell. Your subscription transcends a mere click. It symbolizes a dedication to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled odyssey with us as our channel strives to become a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and steadfast believers. We staunchly believe in the transformative prowess of God's Word, and our objective is to disseminate messages that deeply resonate with the essence of your soul. Become a part of our community, subscribe, and let the radiant light of divine wisdom, your presence is integral to this uplifting journey, and may the abundant blessings of God overflow in every facet of your life. Amen. Stay connected with us across all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel and explore more on our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Gratitude fills our hearts and may God's abundant blessings continue to grace your life abundantly.